favorite thing in Albion Online definitely is the freedom to conquer the world. The Guild vs. Guild system gives you that freedom. Albion Online is really a giant battle between various guilds, factions trying to control the game world. It's about making your mark on the world. You can fight for territory um, and everyone can see what you claimed and everyone can see what you're fighting for and everyone can see when you win. So a lot of this kind of gameplay ends up being about politics and about who do you like and who do you not like and who are your friends and who are your enemies in the world and fighting to make your mark and to make sure that your side wins. And that for me is a, is a very powerful thing. Fights over territories in Albion Online is always five versus five players. Uh, we chose this number because we think it yields a very exciting battlefield experience. By having this five versus five structure, we ensure that the battles are determined by the skill of the players involved and the equipment they bring. And it means that you don't have to be big to be win, you just have to be good to be win. A small group, a small guild of like five or ten people can still take on the largest guilds uh, because all that matters in the final fight are those five people and how good they are. There's no such thing as the best combination of fighters. You have to think about what your opponent is going to bring and you have to counter their build. You also have to think about what your players can do. What, what are the skills that you have trained so far? And you have to bring the appropriate equipment. But since we do not have fixed classes in the game, you can switch at any time, right? If your guild needs a healer, all you need is get some, some healing equipment and you can fulfill that role for as long as it's necessary. So each individual player has to be on top of their game. Uh, they've got to bring the right equipment. They've got to know what they're doing. Um, what the tactics are, what the team plan is, how to react to the situations, and they've got to be able to play really well. Um, there's a lot of mechanical skill in the game, deciding which abilities to use, when to use them, where to be, when to, when to push, when to retreat, and so on. You're always kind of trying to outsmart the enemy, you're always trying to figure out the winning strategy. It's always new, it's always fresh, um, it's always challenging, and that for me is, is the most interesting thing, is that every single battle I go into, I know that it's going to throw something new at me and I'm going to have to think on my feet and figure out how to win. So if you want to get involved in Guild vs Guild, in impacting the world, in making a difference, but you don't want to fight directly, there's still a lot of options available to you. You can support your guild by crafting material for the battle. You know, the armor, the swords, the magic staffs that they're going to use in the battle. You can also help them by making plans for the battle or spying on the other team to find out what they plan to do. When a castle changes hands, I did that. I supplied the swords that took that castle. I mined the ore that made the swords that took that castle. I negotiated the deal with the people next door so they didn't attack us so we could complete that battle. Everybody has a role to play and everyone has an impact on the world. There's no limitations on what you could agree with people. Um, if, you, if you make a reputation as a sellsword, for example, you fight for money um, and you prove the, the guilds around you that, hey, this guy is worth, or this girl is worth picking up because they're good at what they do, then yeah, you can just arrange with them, I'll come and fight for you, you pay me a bit of money, everyone's happy. Like, the world is literally open to do whatever you, whatever you can imagine.